Coming to you from sunny California and the Great White North. Get ready. We are breaking down the obstacles on the Armchair Ninja Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Armchair Ninja Podcast. It is Sunday, November 11th, 2018. My name is Rich, and joining me once again this week is John. How are you making out? I'm great, man. Wow, just a crazy, crazy week for both of us, for all the shows that we're covering. Obstacle Course Racing has had quite a week, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been a little eventful. Um, you yeah, may, yeah, but you, we got to get into uh, <laughs> what everybody's talking about around the world. What's going on with you, bro? I had a bit of an accident, and that's why I'm sorry the sound is uh, probably a little different for you this week. Uh, I'm recording this in my living room with uh, an old headset because I am laid up with a broken fibula, tibia, and a cracked knee thing. I don't even know what the top part is, but I'm I'm put together with nuts and bolts and screws and rods right now. That sounds awful, man. Like, I... I feel the worst for you. Please just take it easy, get better, get stronger, and come back with a fury in terms of, you know, all your injuries. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, And thank you, everyone that's reached out. Um, If you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, you would have seen some pictures and a little bit of detail. Uh, We're going to try to keep this episode short. It's going to be a little hard to edit where I'm at right now and just not the best setup for this. Um... But I just want to give you a quick overview. Uh, Basically, I was indoor rock climbing, as you would imagine. This is how it happened. It wasn't at my office job. So I was, you know, it was a pretty normal, you know, tougher route that I would do. The top of it was at about the 12 foot height. I got one hand onto it, swung the other hand up to grab it. And it, I, I flung out from the wall and came down on just one leg. So instead of landing properly, it happened so fast, I just landed on the one leg. And my bones went through uh, my skin. It was it was bad. That sounds awful. <laughs> I mean, I, I for, for any kids listening, I don't want to, like, I, I could just imagine what that looks like. Um, wow. What, 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 what was going through your mind when that happened? Yeah, like I, I said, we'll get into the, like some of the nitty gritty, but basically I knew immediately. I saw it bend. I didn't see anything gory. I just, I knew it had happened. It wasn't overly painful um, because of the shock and everything. I just yelled out for somebody to come to call an ambulance and they they called one in. I went, I spent a couple days at the hospital as they went through a bunch of stuff, did the surgery, yada, yada. Um yeah, just so now I'm laid up here playing Fortnite constantly. Hey, have fun, man. Taking down all them kids and everybody else playing Fortnite. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. I have like I'm not great at it yet, but I've like I've improved a lot with the dozens of hours I've put in, in the last few days. That's good, man. That's good. And hey, you know what? Take your time, get better. You know, as much as it's a bad situation, enjoy your time off and and just get better and once again all the like all the props to everybody like around the community i i saw like so much love um pouring in support for you and you know i'm just joining them in terms of like giving all my love and support to you and dude they're gonna get better you're gonna get stronger and don't let this you know dissuade you from you know hitting your goals and everything like that Yeah, so I'll probably be back. I'll be taking it a lot easier. It's going to be a long time before I get back again. But yeah, that's that's a whole other discussion. But like I said, we wanted to keep it a little shorter. So I want to give a a little minute here to give you the floor. So Tough Mudder happened. How did you make out? Dude, it was it was great. Super fun. Five time Legionnaire now. Like, whoo, I have done this a lot. And um, I, I completed every single obstacle there. And I, I, this was probably my best showing at a Tough Mudder. I really um, had a ton of fun. I spent time on each obstacle helping out a ton of people because it's really a communal event. Um, once again, Tough Mudder, their slip wall is far more of a real thing <laughs> than the Spartan Ultimate, whatever the heck that thing is called. Right. Far more of a real thing. I, I love that obstacle. Um, 
And once again, Tough Mudder, it's a lot of mental obstacles. And I face a lot of my fears. Um, there are some new obstacles where, you know, I've almost drowned before. And um, it, that was like some of those water obstacles really took me to task. But all, all around, I got through all of them. And it was a really, really enjoyable, memorable event. I can't remember. I know Spartan, if you don't do an obstacle, you have to do burpees. Is there any kind of penalty on Tough Mudder if you don't? Nah, Tough, tough Mudder, everything's optional. You know, Tough Mudder, it's not timed like Spartan. It, it's more of just completing it. Tough Mudder has one of the um, lowest completion rates out of all the obstacle course races. I think it's only it's something like one third of the people don't even finish the race. So it's more of just everybody getting through it. So I wouldn't say surviving is the right term, but you know what I mean, right? Right. And um, yeah, it, it's just one of those things, you know, it, as a legionnaire, somebody's done it multiple times. It's it's kind of like unofficial that you stay at every obstacle and help people that are struggling get through each thing. Um, but once again, the, the big thing is because these are more dangerous obstacles. Hey, if you have heart problems, don't get electrocuted. If you can't swim, don't go in a super deep water obstacle, you know, things like that. Cool. Cool. Sounds like you had a good time. Sounds like you had a, a good showing. Um, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to getting some more details when we have a little bit more time to cover it. Yeah. Next week, I will tell everybody how I almost drowned in the Tough Mudder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll get in a little bit into the crazy drug trip that I went on because it was interesting. To be continued, everyone. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we are covering uh, American Ninja Warrior Jr., uh, this past week's episode and the uh, American, uh, sorry, Ultimate Beastmaster season three, episode five as well. So A&W Jr. episode four, Ultimate Beastmaster episode five. Yes. And this was the week of women kicking butt, bro. It was crazy. It was kind of funny how they lined up that way. Uh, so A&W Jr. Uh, had Taylor Green, who I've been waiting to see. I don't know. I don't think you've been as up on her as I was, Bajan. She was on the Wolfpack podcast, mm -hmm. that viral video of her racing against her coach and everything. Did you catch all that? Yeah, I've, I've seen the video uh, multiple times, actually. I mean, a lot of people always share it online in the community, and I think the world of her. I've seen her, like, videos of her at different events. She's really great. I didn't listen to the podcast. I You know, that's the extent of what I know of her is, like, you know, seeing those videos, but man she's talented and as soon as i saw that i'm like oh she's that girl oh i like instantly i'm glued <laughs> and i'm like i'm expecting big things from her and she did not disappoint yeah it's funny because i thought she was older than that i uh i was looking forward to seeing her kick butt in the 11 12 range i'm a little mm. disappointed she's going to be going up against sean arms um because that i'm kid, excited uh black jewels uh, reached out to us on Twitter and let us know that he's been training uh, Sean Arms, and they call him uh, from last week, the one that we were so up on, mm -hmm. they're calling him Baby Captain America, which I think is a fantastic name for that kid. That is amazing, yes. That's that's actually really good. Um, in, in many ways, you know, I like this. I like the competition, and I'm starting to see, like, the, the theme of the show, of American Ninja Warrior Jr., and why I enjoy it so much more than I expected to, is each episode, they really build up the contenders. By the time it gets to the end, you really know these kids. And, and in many ways, Ultimate Beastmaster does it, that the same thing, but they do it in the span of four episodes, where it's like, mm. you know, in this, it's all compact, compact into one episode. And, man, I'm really enjoying the the way they build all you know, these kids up for the semifinals and, the and you know, like the finals, things like that. Like, each race, I really feel like there's a lot of stakes going on. And for select, you know, ninjas on this show, you know, they really make you invested and care. Um, that said, you know, when it comes down to the finals, I'm very, very interested to see how well she does against Sean Arms. Because both of them are incredibly talented, f amazing athletes. And the key is they both are willing to take risks and they're very comfortable on obstacle courses. And I think that's the big key, right? A lot of these kids, they go for it and they're amazing. But but in particular, Taylor and, and Sean, they, when they're on obstacles, like they swing from one arm, you know, they they skip a step, you know, they, they just 
they they excel at a different pace where they're not second guessing themselves because they have that built in comfort. So I think when it comes to the finals, they are going to have a huge leg up and I can't wait to see them against each other. Yeah. Yeah. And in the 11 to 12 range, we had Autumn Matheson, who when they showed her segment, she's a pole vaulter. She trains on hay bales and she has a dog like she's ticking all of the ninja boxes. I knew immediately she was going to win the whole thing. Yeah, but really her storyline. I mean, I was almost in tears. This is what shocked me about the show is that, you know, they they can go in the deep dramatic range. But the most important thing for me in particular is that they don't milk it. We've seen in the years past that they really milk the dramatic, sad storylines. They don't do this on this show. And I think this was a theme for the past two years. Like, production's gotten so much better and being smart about it, you know? We, we, he, we have this gut punch of her losing her brother, and it felt awful. But they didn't use that to just talk about, like, you know, her heartbreak and how sad she is or anything like that. It was more being like, I have dealt with this grief. I'm internalized it, and I've, you know, come out, you know, um, not not necessarily a better person, but you know, I've dealt with the grief, and I've I've internalized it towards like loving my dog and having a more close knit family. And they really made it a positive um, storyline for her. And I felt that felt that was so powerful and so smart. Yeah, it was very good, um, very emotional. Definitely hit me. Um, but it's like you said, they, they give you that gut punch and then they bring it back around. And how do you, how do you not love her? Like she was great. She had the little dance competition against Travis, who was also a really cute kid that was doing amazing. like handstands and backflips. And, you know, she was keeping right up on them. She wasn't getting intimidated. Um, she couldn't do a forward flip after he did that. But that was like a highlight of the show. Like, it's so funny that they can make these little kids so engaging or not. I mean, the kids are engaging, but that the show itself is so engaging, but we really didn't give it enough credit, right? You think you can't really relate to these little kids, but it's easy to, they're, they're, they're all wonderful. Yeah. I think it's the fact that they, they, the way they present these kids, they don't present them as, Oh, these are kids. And you know, we're just rooting for them and good for them. They present them just like, the ninjas and the athletes that they are. Hey, this is Taylor. This is, you know, so-and-so. And let me tell you about their story, their accolades, and how amazing they are. And they really give them all the, the respect in the world. And not only that, but they are doing very legit athletic obstacle courses. You know, this isn't some nerf toned down thing. It's not like how we've seen it, no offense to the way they presented before, but, like, I've, I've seen how they did it on... um Oh, gosh, I forget it. But like the Steve Harvey show and, and some other things where it's like, yeah, oh, it's cute and good for them. And I'm not trying to begrudge them, but it's like I just I, I had one biased perception of what the show would be. And they have completely floored me by going the exact opposite route and really showing these these athletes the respect that they deserve. And I man, I am enjoying this. Yeah. Autumn actually fell to her knees on the TikTok in the final race. And still managed to tr- manage to transition <laughs> to the cargo net. Like, that was impressive. That's that's an athletic feat. Like, I don't care how scaled down the course is. That is very, very cool and very, very difficult. Yeah, props to anybody that can do a transition obstacle, g- grab it with their arms. You know, they're supposed to catch it also with their legs, but they don't, and they still hold on. I need to take notes. Just saying. In <laughs> uh, the 13-14 range, I really thought Daniel had it locked up i mean there were some really great close back and forth races along the way there was a few through this whole episode um but in the end uh sophia ends up taking it home like what a a great race like there was no Mm -hmm. denying it it wasn't because you know it wasn't because somebody just messed up like she just did fantastic all of the racers like whether they won or lost in this episode just all of them were great yeah, I think we we also need to mention the 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 boys on this episode were also very talented. Like the the level of athlete was very high and every race was close. I mean, there were two instances on this episode alone where the the difference between the point buzzers were less than a second. 
I mean, and one of them was a tenth of a second. So, yeah. I mean, it was neck and neck, but the women, the, I don't know if I should call them girls or women. But, <laughs> I think it's safe know, to call the, them girls. Uh, yeah, I guess in this one, the girls prevailed. You know, they, they really did. And they really did amazing. And, and not just that, but they com- prevailed with grace. There are multiple instances where, you know, um, one kid hits the buzzer first and they congratulate the other kid or cheer them on. And I really like seeing that. Yeah, it was wonderful. So uh, Sophia Lavely was the winner for the 13-14 range. And that's when I realized it was a clean sweep. Girls at all stages. That was something like we expected to see some really strong performers and the younger ages. But to have them win all three in an episode, it's just next level. It is so cool. Yep. Girl power, man. All for it. Uh, so let's move on to Ultimate Beastmaster. Speaking of girl power, boy, do I got a lot to say. This was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So there was a, a new ep- a new obstacle, Ribcage Row. Four sets of handholds spaced. It didn't say how far apart, I don't think. But they Not build it as exponentially harder than any obstacle we've seen on level one before. And I got to disagree. I don't think that's true at all. Yeah, I, I I didn't hear that part where it's way harder. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, nobody completed the whole thing, so maybe they get their, their, that's based on something there. But yeah, it's the first one to injure somebody, it, I guess. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where maybe it's different being on it than the visual aspect of it. But visually, I was just like, it's a cool obstacle. I get why it's difficult because it's springy. But I, I mean, I've seen some tougher obstacles, in my opinion, um, from this particular course. Yeah. I wish I saw, you know, the later ones. I, I think this was, like, one of the tougher stage ones that we've seen, though. I, I, I gotta give them credit for that. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, think because the obstacle afterwards was that little balance-like thingy that used to be in um, stage two from Ultimate Beastmaster. And I remember, like, very few people have gotten through that thing. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, so, overall, for that epi- this episode... Uh, again, we're cutting it short. I apologize, everybody. But we've got... Uh, in the end, uh, we had Jesse Turner from Australia and Norman Lichtenberg from Germany, who did very well through the episode. You know, no complaints. They, they're they very standard competitors. Fairly engaging. Uh, but I think we both really want to focus on Laura Basta from France. Yeah, there are two, um, actually, athletes that were the story of this episode, and neither of them were the finalists. There were two people that really stole this episode. One, I'll just keep it short, was the male athlete from America. Uh, Do you remember his name by any chance? Yeah, it's Austin Ray. He's a YouTuber. Yes. Thank you, because I I follow him. I I felt so bad. I knew his name was Austin, but I forgot his last name. So so, um, this guy, Austin, he has a fantastic social media presence. Um, my girlfriend and, and myself have been following him for about two years now. Oh. He creates um, viral videos with his girlfriend doing couples workouts that are really, really cool. And and my girlfriend and I actually do a lot of them. You know, we, we, we try to test ourselves doing these these different workouts. Very fantastic. Very cool. And, and this guy has a charisma that is rarely seen. I mean, a lot of athletes, and sometimes I begrudge them, you know, uh, poo-poo, like, hey, you're on TV, you know, kind of show some some personality here this guy's got it for days and he gets it he's athletic but also fun and and just a very likable person sometimes somebody as beefy as him can be unlikable i find i found him amazing yeah he was pretty good he definitely uh kept us entertained i thought he was good overall he was a big guy he was 215 pounds big dude (laughs) he's my height 511 and he's like 75 (laughs) pounds heavier than me or no, 65 pounds heavier than me. <laughs> He's literally your height and my weight. So there you go. There you go. <laughs> Combine Rich and I together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So there was, uh, besides him, we should mention that the competitor from Mexico actually dislocated his shoulder on ribcage Ooh. row, which looked pretty awful. I got to say, like watching them put that back in place and watching all oh, of the hosts Oh, you were just wins. ready to get Dude, you like I don't know if you if you got the rights, but you need to like put in the sound of like what, dude? <laughs> they they played them putting it back in place. I've dislocated my knee. I have never heard a crack or whatever sound that made, but that was horrific. I audibly screamed. I screamed listening to that. 
it was like I, I can't even describe it. It was just so gross. <laughs> like and they did it slow and it just popped in. Man, that did not look fun at all. No, no. Um and even though he made it far enough to continue on, he wasn't able to because of the injury, obviously. Um yeah. I would not <laughs> continue under that. Yeah. Uh I think Yeah, that's actually the only reason Laura moved on. Um mm-hmm. Because of his injury, she squeaked in. Um, she made it as far as Angelica in level one, um, but their times, you know, Angelica was a little faster. So I really was not thinking much of Laura going into level two and like, ah, she squeaked in. And then they did her little segment where she was the world fitness champion. And that did not, imp- like, yes, it's impressive. I mean, not to, you know, get down on fitness, but as far as for skills to tackle the beast, I'm like, that doesn't really tell me much of anything. So I thought, well, she's going to fall early. She made it to the Dreadmill Dismount. Like, that is insanely far into level two. Yeah. Um. J- just for reference to everybody, a woman to this point hasn't even completed the first obstacle on stage two for this season. I can't speak to other seasons, um, but at least this season, nobody's even gone past the first obstacle. She completes that and she keeps moving forward. She gets past that tube of doom. I forget the name of it, (laughs) but like everybody fails at that. She gets through it and not only gets through it, she destroys that obstacle. Yeah. And even on this episode, like a bunch of the dudes were, were struggling on a thing. She does it like nothing. She gets past the treadmill. Like, she was just fantastic. And I think this speaks to Ultimate Beastmaster and the fact that it every stage works out a different level, uh, like area of fitness. And just because you fail at stage one or don't do as well in stage one doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to do well in stages two and three and four. Right. Everything is different. And I, I really found that this was a good example of that where, yeah, she struggled in stage one. But man, did she show how amazing she is in stage two. And she was a complete delight to watch. You know, I actually do want to mention one other competitor here, Norman um, from Germany. He actually finished level two. He didn't even have to do the back half because of the way the points system works. And they thought, outright but... said that the points don't matter at that point. Like, like you're calling out the biggest flaw of your show directly the host outright said Mm -hmm. the points don't matter at this point he's just doing it because yeah i it was something that was in the back of my mind i just don't want to it's just repeating myself every time yeah man i have strong thoughts about that and i i thoroughly hope that is something they change in season four because i know they want to change some things up for season three but this was a huge, huge dud in terms of resetting the points. Like at this point, I've accepted the whole format of three episodes and then a semifinal. I can accept that completely because I understand this is a binge watch show. But it is a huge detriment to the enjoyability of watching this when um, the stakes just aren't there as involved, you know? Yeah. And that's I, my two cents. I'm, I'm going to move on. It, well, it, yeah. I mean, we don't want to harp on it, although we do like to do that sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's just being back. The semifinals were great. Uh, I actually do. I actually like the the three and then the semifinal format that we ha- have. Yeah, I'm it's starting just, to. I'm starting to really enjoy it when I think back. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's just back into this foolishness with the the points thing. Anyway, no no more harping on it. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny that in level three, Laura like made it halfway up Viper Climb. She made it as far as we've seen anyone make it in level three this season. Like, it's absolutely insane. It was dope, man. Um, she did fantastic in stage three also. And it, this was, I, I don't know. I I can see people going one way or the other. But I part of me doesn't really like the fact that not only were the points reset, although that would go into our favor, but hey, you know, the guys worked hard for the points that they had. But in stage three... She doesn't hit the the um, the point thruster, the like super thruster, right? Yeah. Where it counts down, but it gives so much points. But to the fact where she got really far on that spiral climb, whatever it's called, obstacle. But that didn't matter because she didn't complete it. But she got really far, right? So the next guy, like it comes down to the final run, 
The guy hits that point thruster, and instantly, he surpasses her. It doesn't matter if he gets any further than she did on the entire stage. Just because he hit that point thruster, he automatically beats her. And I think that just, I don't know. I, a part of me just thinks there could have been something better to that. Yeah, yeah, it made it a little bittersweet. She made it, she was one of the two that went the furthest, but she doesn't move on to the semifinals. It just seems unfair. Yeah, and it's simply just because somebody stuck their arm out and hit a a buzzer. (laughs) Yeah, which she did (laughs) try for, but she doesn't have the reach, right? So it's, it's kind of a kick in the pants. Yeah. With that being said, we thought she was fantastic, and we thought she stole the show and wanted to make our episode as much about her as we could. Yeah, that said, I mean, she really did make history. She showed that, you know, even though women tend to struggle on stage one, you know, that does not mean that women are unathletic or whatever, you know. Everybody has strengths, and there are certain obstacles in stage one where it's like, mm, could be a little tricky. Not not for women necessarily, but for shorter competitors or something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, she showed that with the right uh, ability and athleticism, you can do fantastic in stages two and three. And I think she really opens the door for a lot more women that can do fantastic. And and I don't know. Um, I really was really glued, and I just was cheering her on the entire way. And props to everybody involved with Ultimate Beastmaster, because they know they're witnessing history, and they gave her time to show her story and just the entire um, aura of, you know, her runs. You know, it wasn't something that was glossed over. They really hit home how much of a powerful thing this was. All of the hosts were in the background. You know, it wasn't about the hosts again, but they really all came together and really celebrated her as one. And and it was just a really powerful moment. Once again, this show really knows when they're on to something and it's a powerful moment, they know exactly how to present it. Couldn't agree more. I think they did a great job. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed the episode. Um, both episodes, both shows are still going strong. Um, yeah. Yeah, another Good great stuff, week. Good stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. All right. So that is it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach me as rich at ninjapodcast.com. I am at Ninja Podcast on both Instagram and Twitter. And Bijan, how can they reach you? Hit me up at Twitter and Instagram at Bijan151. That is B-I-J-A-N-151. All of the, you know, respect in the world to you, Rich. Um, you've been a trooper this whole week, you know, really taking your injury in good stride, really having, you know, your chin up. You know, you, you're not letting this get down on you. And um, just keep on pushing through, man. You're going to get through this. And um, I love you, bro, from the other side of the continent. And please get better. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a fantastic week. Peace and love, y'all.